Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and welcome back to the 6-5 Summit, day three. We are talking all about security, multiple ways to secure systems, environments, software, hardware, services, and it's my pleasure to introduce Gopi from Axiato. Gopi, how are you? Not bad, Pat. Thank you for having us in here. It's our honor to be in the good company. Absolutely. And it's been great getting to know you over the years. Uh, we met first at Qualcomm, where you, quite frankly, shook up the entire networking industry. And then I'm sure you figured, hey, what other industries can I, uh, can I disrupt out there, right? And data center security uh, is where you landed. And it's been really exciting to be chronicling uh, the journey that uh, Axiato uh, is on. So maybe a best place to start is last week, uh, you introduced the TCU uh, or what we call the trusted control or compute unit. Uh, maybe talk about uh, what is it and what problem does it solve? So, First of all, thank you. Yeah, at Qualcomm, we did a Wi-Fi mesh. That was just now me. Obviously, we were a full team to be able to deliver. It makes a team and a village to make it a success. So we, half of the team is the mention. I mentioned that because half of the team isn't here with me to do it again. And uh, this is a team effort. So coming to the, we announced a product called Trusted Compute and Control Unit. This is a first of a kind in the market. What we do is uh, you see it as a complementary to a product like a DPU. A DPU does for the data center side, and this is a data center on the LAN port side. This is a control and management port. So what we're replacing is similar to that as a control and management side, gives the similar functions as DPU. And it's a single chip, a platform security in a product, and integrates multiple chips we're trying to address in the market today, which is a BMC, TPM, root of trust, and a combination of either LAN and motherboard or FPGA combinations. Gives the flexibility of programmability on that. We also offer, along with a, a this chip, in you know, an OCP compliant, open compute platform compliant uh, product called DCSCM, Data Center Secure Control Module. So we are a single chip based DCSCM product. So we offer a chip and also the car. Yeah, it's incredible uh, how much popcorn you see on, that's my technical term, of course, Gopi, is popcorn, uh, <laughs> to, to secure these motherboards, regardless of what environment there is, whether they're a hyperscaler data center, whether they're an enterprise data center, uh, whether they're in a carrier and on the edge, uh, pretty much this, this technology with you know, the combo of root of trust, TPM, BMC, and LOM, uh, you pretty much see everywhere. And I was, I was also very pleased to see OCP come in uh, with a standard so we don't see 27 different, uh, you know, spot uh, implementations uh, out there. So uh, we talk about security in broad terms. In fact, uh, we have seven presenters in security in this track that are coming at it at somewhat of a different angle, okay? Whether uh, a different thesis, uh, a different place in the security value chain, uh, a lot of it is, is based on the problem they solve. You know, some companies are taking a holistic view, like, a, you know, hey, we're the one-stop shop for zero trust, but uh, it, security is somewhat uh, fragmented out there. So the question I have about the TCU is, uh, how is it different from other cybersecurity solutions uh, in this space? And does it address uh, elements that I know this space really didn't help much with, and that's ransomware? Yeah, so number one is, as you talked about, cybersecurity is the biggest thing in the market right now. There's you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people are trying to address. Most of, and 99% of those are addressing in a software. So mostly, you know, ransomware as a thing is a definition is somebody compromised the credentials and however he came into the system and it comes to whether it's a kernel, whether it's an application, whether whatever the software application or driver server, you're running it. It comes through that, but he'll go for your, you know, money chest, which is your hard disk or the platform where he'll take over as encrypting the hard disk or, you know, taking over the system as a super user. 
And that's that's where, unfortunately, once the all these zero trust model softwares in the market believes in something called immutable root of trust, and they assume that is immutable today. That's the right. bigger flaw in every of the platforms in the market today or every solutions. What we come into the picture exactly addressing, making that real immutable root of trust, you know, taking it by reducing the platform surface of threat surface is called, where you call the popcorn, which is a multiple chips in there. That means attack places are more and more weakness can come in. If something happens and you have to be able to, you know, go to everybody to get the updated driver to work through. So what we do is not only just integrating, specifically addressing the TCU addresses, something we call in a buzzword in a white uh, in an easy way to do it in a, a one word or two word sentences it's an ai driven hardware anchored security so what we added is our ai is a little different than what's outside in the market mostly outside is called computer vision based uh, ai and ai's definition is not that but that's what it is been used in the market what we do is our inferences are more packet packets packets information but, you know able to detect the behavior anomaly detection able to, and we train the models to be how the ransomware look like inside of the hardware. So we take every attack in the market has been reported. We trace that back to how the hardware side looks and our AI learns that way. So our TCU onboard AI uh, platform security, we call able to look for those bad patterns, which we already know. And if there is something we can stop in the tracks. So we may be the one of the architectures, the only one of the architectures in the market where we can detect ransomware while it is happening. And you can make a rules engine to be able to stop it or collect the forensic data. So even in case we cannot stop, you have a forensic data to go back and look at it. That's where the third one is because it's an AI and machine learning, we not only learn and stop and detect and stop today, but we actually able to predict for the future most of the zero day attacks in the first day, we call it as a zero day because we don't understand that yet, but we can predict these are all nine out of the 10 are mostly rinse and repeat attacks or flavors of these attacks. What has been there because you're throwing it to the AI engine, it's able to predict it's a neural network engine. We got a four teraps of AI engines inside on the chip and they do all inferencing on the chip itself. So we should be able to detect, I won't say 100% of them because everybody gets smarter, but we can detect much better than what's here today. And not only that, as a stats wise, today for a ransomware attack, any breach to be detected, it takes approximately 30 days to 90 days, depends on where the setup is on the, any data center. We should be able to detect in, you know, within a you know, seconds, if not milliseconds. So yeah. that's, that's a value we bring up. We're not replacing any of the software solutions in the market, uh, but we're actually augmenting everybody. Now that's important because there's been a lot of industry work that's gone, gone into protecting this. And this is one of these areas that some people just don't want to change unless there's a really good reason for it. And I think you've given them a very good reason for it. Fundamentally, these solutions uh, were very uh, locked in and very non-upgradable uh, to upcoming um, maladies and, and malware. And there's nothing else I've learned about security in the past 30 years is that hackers are attack on an ROI basis, which is the least work for the biggest payoff. And they hit areas that have been neglected uh, from time to time. And I do believe that this is an area uh, on the server motherboard that has been uh, neglected uh, in the past. If nothing else, it's not upgradable uh, to the new attacks. So it's hard for me as an anal analyst to have a conversation over the past two months and not talk about AI, okay? And I'm, I'm not confused. I, I do separate between fads like NFTs and, and trends uh, like, like AI, but um, bringing out something like the TCU takes an incredible amount of foresight and planning. And whether we want to debate it was three years, four years ago, you had to make the bet on a specific amount of blocks and transistors that you dedicated to that AI that you alluded to a little bit. Can we talk a little bit more about the AI capabilities of the TCU? Yeah, so I talked about one on the ransomware. So what we do is train the models on based on the existing attacks, how the hardware fingerprints looks like, we train that to our AI engine. There are four engines inside, one does that function so we can detect anything. 
And I talked about, we look for a behavior anomaly, whether it's a user, whether it's a port. So physical security is also a, a protection we provide. So if somebody comes and plugs in USB stick and trying to put a, some kind of ransomware or any malware attack into coming into, we'll be able to detect by the hardware level before even enumeration of the hardware. So we protect every iOS around it. Everything is encrypted. And any power analysis way of an attacks also we protect. That's one of the AI focus. And the last one is sensor AI, we call it. So basically everything on a motherboard, every sensor from power rails, voltage, thermal, clock, uh, clock, fans, etc., even the system opening also. We all those sensors, we build a heuristic telematics data, the learning behavior on site will learn and then able to see the you know detection of that particular event happening. Let's say clock glitch happening, voltage glitch happening. You know exactly where the system is, that authentication of the system is happening and you give a glitch. That means it's a critical time. The glitch is not the right way. It could be a, your you know, side channel attack. So we protect right there itself. We go for multi-factor authentication. Let's say if you answer all of them, we collect the forensic data, push to the cloud. So you have these data. So there are multiple stages of these to be able to do it. And uh, on the ransomware side, just in case, we're looking for a bad pattern. We're looking for a behavior anomaly. Let's say if both of them are, we found that is not a bad packet based on the training you have it, but it's still behavior is something abnormal in here. So what to do with this, we have a updated service as a data lake on the cloud, powered by generative AI algorithms. So we use outside what has been in the market. So rather than reinventing the wheel, we take the generative AI engines to be able to get trained on the cloud. So inferencing happens on the chip, but the training happens on the cloud with the generative AI systems, and then bring it back the training to be able to back into the models to the system in your platform system in there to protect against. So we will be able to do a lot faster the all this process in a base compared to what would have been a days and everything we would be less than less than seconds. So that sounds very beneficial to a lot of different markets, but you know product management, business one-on-one, you can't target everybody everywhere. Uh, what are some of the customers that, have, that are showing interest? Uh, who did you build this for? So initially, obviously, you're right. Startup company has to stay focused, but we will be, every, there is a lot of interest for the other market, but the target markets to start with is a lot of inputs came from bigger CSP, CTOs, technologies from these companies are data centers and then the 5GB stations. And the now is a, enterprise switches, everything on the top of the rack switches. Those three with the same product with a little bit of variations we are addressing back to again, data centers could be a, a, a CSP based cloud service providers or co-located data centers or enterprise data centers, all of them to be. And then plus the every 5G base station, especially RAN side where your multi-tenant and multi-node applications are, which is authentication is new rate. And then the switches, especially the high-end switches right now, trying to use this one too also. We do have a customers which started, you know, building the POCs for these things. So those three are the first market. But we do get the interest from the laptops, set-up boxes, you know, automobile, uh, exactly. everybody's asking. So all these guys are asking, but this is a little bit bigger with, uh, you know, every encryption and cryptos are a lot bigger to the comparison of where it can go to the, the smaller uh smaller size chips needed for the other markets, but the you know bigger volume for that. So we'll focus on the first generation to be these three markets, data centers, base stations, and switches. Yeah, one of the things I really appreciate that you did is you worked very closely with OCP, yes. uh, Open Compute Project, uh, that is essentially a standards body for all things uh, scale and non-proprietary. And a lot of these markets, data centers, network switching, OEM, ODMs, particularly CSP, and a lot of enterprise, uh, they're looking for standards that, uh, that, that the body has, has worked on. And that's one of the biggest reasons, I think, companies that abide by and help create OCP standards, once you fit in, you can address multiple segments. And if your card, by the way, <laughs> is a lot smaller than I would have expected, right? So it's not like you know, you've got some big difference between, you know, an environment that's fanless versus fanful. So it allows you to uh, go into multiple markets. I remember the first time uh, we met and you showed me the car and I, I was wondering in my head, like, is this it? Right. I mean, that's yeah. really small uh, and particularly because it's replacing so many parts. And it's not just a replacement play, right? An integration play, but you're adding a heck of a lot more functionality to it. Uh, as well. So 
uh, I, I absolutely like uh, like the story. So let's talk about availability. I mean, you're a startup, you're a uh, nimble, smaller company, but you have a lot of experience in much larger companies and know how to productize and get these things to market. Uh, when, when, when is it available? So it's available now. We just announced as you talked about last week, uh, we are, you know, we've been working at this one. This is a complex chip with a combination of ARM um, and RISC-V process and the custom instructions and all that stuff. So it took a time, but now we got the product and it's all working. It's been in the lab for eight weeks already. So we're sampling to the customer. It is in the hands of some customers right now at Computex. So we're going to be showing uh, this to also and you know, playing this to the market in a, uh, so it's available now, simple, uh, in a card form or a chip form. So. And definitely the OCP comment you made, uh, we are thankful for that. And the whole OCP able to push this in the market. The DCSCI connector makes it easy for everybody to be not only just you know, using a, a replacement part, if that's in case something happens for them, but you're reusing the compute power, what you have, and you don't need to throw away the whole system and anything bad happens. So those are also our special values, how you can commission, decommission the products, et cetera. So, so Gopi, I want to thank you for coming on the 6.5 Summit and talking about the TCU and all the benefits that it can bring to security. You know, we have a combination of the largest tech companies and some of the smallest, most innovative and nimble companies. And I thought you uh, really did a great job uh, explaining it. So, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, for the other audience, we're going to be showing this as a Computex a demos. So we welcome everybody to come up and see. You'll see this as an action completely, how we are attacking and able to stop the, we predict, you know, able to detect the attacks and, you know, show it everything and network anomaly detection, all, all kind of variants is what we just talked about. You can get to see that in live. So. Yeah, and uh, for the audience, we'll be uh, sure to put those uh, Computex uh, demos in the show notes, and you can go check it out for yourself. I've also written a Forbes article that was uh, before Computex that gives a little bit of a breakdown uh, on the technology and a more insights and strategy uh, point of view of, of how we're uh, looking at it uh, as well. So thanks a lot, Gopi. Hopefully uh, you can come back on the show uh, later in the year and tell us how it's going. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, thanks. let's do that again. So That's good. This is Pat Moorhead for the 6.5 Summit, day three, talking all things security. And there are so many threats out there. We're in this AI spy versus AI spy environment now. And you've got to bring your best of AI everywhere you are in the security chain. And that's exactly where the TCU fits. Uh, please stick around for more of day three content, but also because we've recorded it, you can go also check out day one and day two content as well. Wherever you are on the planet, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Thanks. <laughs>